What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.1 Beta 2 to register developers just one week after the release of Beta 1 and also one week after the release of iOS 15 to the public. So public beta testers, you should be seeing this update very soon. But anyways, in addition to iOS, we also got updates for iPadOS 15.1 Beta 2, we got watchOS 8.1 Beta 2, and tvOS 15.1 beta 2 so no mac os monterey updates we're still running behind on that but of course in this video we're talking all about ios and ipad os and what's new in the software along with when to expect the next public ios 15 release that will be addressing a lot of the issues that iphone 13 users are facing because i know a lot of you guys are not running the betas right now but if you're watching this video you probably are so let's go ahead and talk about 15.1 beta 2 so you can see the size there came in just under a gigabyte for most devices so mine came in around 944 megabytes although i was seeing it as low as like five six hundred megabytes so the size will vary depending on the version and the device you're coming from i'm running this right now on my iphone 13. so if we go to our settings and check out the build number let's go to general about 15.1 we can see the build number here is 19B5052F. So we do have an F at the end of the build number, which does indicate we still have a few more betas to go as I predicted in my first beta video. So if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see we also have an update there. It's now 1.14. 0.01 so if you were having issues on the first beta you could see those resolved here with beta 2. all right so now what's new here in ios 15.1 beta 2 and the first thing is the unlock with apple watch feature now works properly on the iphone 13 and 13 pros so this was a big issue beforehand on ios 15 and 15.1 beta 1 for some users but it is fully fixed now and now your phone and watch can communicate properly so if you go into my main device here my iPhone 13 Pro and go into my face ID settings you can see I have the feature enabled and before on iOS 15 and 15.1 beta 1 for some users you were not able to enable this toggle so it would give you a communication error and you would not be able to enable it but now you can and also I'll show you that it does work properly so I'm gonna go ahead and cover my mouth real quick and you can see it unlocked and on my Apple watch we get confirmation that my iPhone was unlocked via my Apple watch so that was a major bug affecting iPhone 13 users but now it has been resolved here with 15.1 beta 2. we also get a fix to another pretty major bug that's been talked about a lot over the past few weeks and that is the storage bug so if we go to our system storage a lot of people were reporting on iOS 15 that there was an issue with the storage being miscalculated so the storage up top would not show an accurate number of how much storage was actually being used on your device some people also got errors with the storage like it would just say storage almost full even though the storage was not almost full so it appears that both of those have been fixed here in 15.1 beta 2. i've never had those but according to people on social media who i reached out to who had that issue before it seems like it is fixed here on 15.1 beta 2. so if you were having storage issues let me know in a comment down below to confirm that those have been resolved here in the second beta now we also got major updates to numbers keynote and pages so all three of apple's applications have been updated to support ios 15 and they come with some big new features so like for pages you can see the release notes right here but the big one for pages is that it has a new screen view that makes editing easier and then if we go back to keynote keynote one of the big features here is that you have live video now so it says live video makes presentations even more engaging by letting you use the camera in your iphone or ipad to show yourself right on at your slides in a window or full screen so of course there are a lot of other changes there as well but that is the headlining one and then for numbers the headlining feature is pivot tables as you can see right there we have formatted pivot tables and just a few taps so that's something that everybody's been wanting for a very long time in numbers and we finally have it now with this new update version 11.2 so some pretty big updates there for numbers keynote and pages of course those do not require 15.1 beta 2 but i did just want to mention it in this video since they did just recently get updated now we also have a minor change inside of our settings for our airpods so this is something that i missed in the first beta but if we go to accessibility here and then down to airpods and then down here to spatial audio head tracking you will see that we now have a toggle a kill switch for follow iphone so i'll show you guys what it looked like i tried to 
grabbed the wrong phone, but here's what it looked like on iOS 15 over here on the left. So you could see pretty big difference there. We just have a toggle now, whereas before we had the option to choose, you know, off video content or audio and video content. And then if you connect your AirPods and then go to the control center and haptic press right here on the volume, you could see down here we do have head tracking as well. So we have a toggle for head tracking. If I go ahead and play some media real quick and then go back to the control center, you could see that we'll have head tracking right here. So you can see it says head tracked and also fixed. So you could change between these two options right here. And as far as share play goes with FaceTime, where you can share your screen or share media like music or TV shows, that is actually better here in 15.1. So I noticed this in beta one when it was first re-enabled. So as you guys know, share play was re-enabled with 15.1 beta one, and it is definitely more stable than it was on the initial iOS 15.0 betas before it got removed. So looks like share play is going to make it to the final release if I had to guess, just because it is a lot more stable than it had been previously. And then I know a lot of you guys have also asked about the COVID vaccination cards and the wallet application where you can add a digital COVID vaccine card. We have not seen that roll out to the masses just yet. That will be, you know, based on your state as well. So we're still waiting to hear a lot of details about that, but it is coming very soon. Now, as far as the digital driver's license, that is going to take longer to roll out just because, you know, obviously that's a lot more of a liability thing. So I think that the digital driver's license probably will not be here, honestly, until next year, if I had to guess. Now it is rolling out to some states, but I'm talking about to all 50 states. I don't think we're going to see that digital driver's license until probably 2022, if I had to guess. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, we do have a fix, like I said, for the unlock with Apple Watch and also the storage bug, but it also appears that we might have a fix for the overlapping notifications. So as you guys know, in iOS 15 and 15.1 beta one, there were a lot of issues with notifications just simply overlapping. So like when you tap to show more notifications from that application, and then when you went to show less, it would overlap. And there'll just be a lot of issues here in the notification center. But after testing this out multiple times here on beta two, I've not been able to recreate any type of issue with notifications. So we might finally see a fix for that. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments below. And of course, I will be making a follow up to you know, report back and see for sure if that has been fixed or not. And then also I forgot to mention this bug as well. So if you have the automation set up for shortcuts where it changes your wallpaper automatically every day, I made multiple videos on that, that is still bugged out here in iOS 15. It's gonna give you that error. It will still work, but it's gonna give you that error saying that it didn't work or that it failed. So still waiting on a fix for that as well, but it has not been fixed here in 15.1 beta two. And then if we go into the release notes for this update, you could see there's really not too much here, just a few known issues for like the home application and for voiceover. We do have a resolved issue here for iPad OS 15.1 beta two. And you can see it says resolved an issue where multiple taps are required to close the sidebar. So apparently it was hard to close the sidebar before, I didn't have that, but that has been fixed. And then also there's a small Swift UI bug that has been fixed as well. So really the main reason for this update to come out really ahead of schedule, because I thought this would be released next week. I thought there would be a two week interval. I think the main reason was to fix the Apple watch unlock feature, the unlock with Apple watch feature for the iPhone 13, because before it could not communicate. And then also I think that Apple pushed out the beta of this before a public release, just to make sure there are no other issues and to make sure it really fixes it for everybody. So I still think we could see a 15.0.1 this week or early next week, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But I think that's why they pushed out to beta testers first, just to make sure it works properly. And then they're going to push it out to the public with that public release. That's just my prediction. And like I said, we'll talk about that again here in a moment. But first I want to talk about the performance here with 15.1 beta two. It feels about the same to me as beta one. I mean, everything is smooth. Face ID is really fast. Safari is really fast. Everything feels fine. I'm going to run a benchmark here, a Geekbench test. I have not done one yet. And this is actually going to be the first test I've done on this iPhone 13. So this should be pretty interesting, but so far performance feels about the same to me, but we'll see what this test shows. So you can see our results here. We got a 1731 on the single core and a 4626 on the multi-core. So some pretty strong scores there. If we look back at the history here, this is just imported from another device, but it still should be interesting to see. You could see the multi-core of course is much higher because this is an iPhone 13. It was compared to an iPhone 12, but much higher scores here on the 13. And we'll be able to use this benchmark now to test other versions as well, but pretty strong numbers via Geekbench. And as far as battery life goes, battery life, I would not expect to change really any here in 15.1 beta two. I mean, we could see 
a change and you know some fixes to battery drain and the official release of iOS 15 or maybe 15.2. But right now, I think Apple is a lot more worried about other things like the unlock with Apple Watch, the storage issue. There's just a lot more important issues right now than battery life because for most people, it's perfectly fine. So now what is next for Apple? So today is Tuesday the 28th and I would expect iOS 15.0.1 to actually come next. I think this could actually come before 15.1 beta 3. So we could see a 15.0.1, a public release. And the reason I think we could see this very soon is because there are a lot of issues affecting the iPhone 13 users. So if you just got an iPhone 13, there are issues, you know, the unlock with Apple Watch, you know, we have also multiple other issues affecting those users. So I think we could see a public release of iOS 15.0.1 honestly, as early as tomorrow, the 29th. So we could also see it sometime next week. But if Apple is on a one week cycle for 15.1, that means we should see beta three on the week of the fourth. Although I would not be surprised to see Apple skip a week if we do get that public release on the fourth, and then maybe a 15.1 beta three the week of the 11th, although that's probably unlikely, we probably will stay on a one week cycle for the betas. But I would say to expect a 15.0.1 sometime pretty soon, just to address those issues. That way Apple is not waiting until the end of October to address those issues for iPhone 13 users who just got their device and they're already having issues with it. Those are just my predictions. And if you guys want to stay up to date with all of my thoughts about these iOS releases, you can go ahead and follow me over here on Twitter and shout out to Susan who just tweeted me, which is crazy over on Twitter, but go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you're not already. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage coming very, very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.